Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Today's tip and trick video is going to go over how to paint sand. I had a question from a viewer and so I am going to show two versions of sand. One would be a distant sand dune and then this is a closer up look at uh, sand. So I will go over some colors here in just a second. But first of all, I wanted to say thank you for all of the views and the comments and the likes and subscribes. This is my number uh, 50 video or 50 videos in this series. And I really appreciate all of you following along. And uh, just as a quick aside, if you want more watercolor information or would like some classes on watercolor, I have some online classes on my website now both uh, online videos that you can purchase or um, some Zoom online watercolor workshops that are available. So please uh, go check out my website at LorraineWatryStudio.com and now back to the uh, sand tip. So I have as I said, two images on my board and I am going to do a uh, start on one and then I'll start the other. But one of the first things I need to do is to spatter some masking fluid onto the uh, sand that will be very, uh, you'll see all the little granules of the sand on this one. And then we can move on. So I have created a cut out, I put uh, just a piece of paper and I put some double, uh, I rolled some masking tape and put it on the back just to seal that edge down a little bit and keep the mask with within this border. And then generally I will lay some paper down farther and around. In fact, I might go ahead and tear this just to protect over here a little more. And the mask I will use on a toothbrush to spatter. So these are just, this is just an old toothbrush and I will use my PBO uh, drawing gum and I use this when I am showing uh, what I'm doing with the mask because it does have the blue in there. I like the Winsor & Newton colorless mask for when I'm masking normally, but this works well for showing what I'm doing. So I'm just going to take my finger and pull against the bristles and spatter the mask on here so that I get mask sort of everywhere and I do tend to twist and turn the brush so that it gets a variety of uh, spatter on there. And then I need to go clean this and clean my finger and so I will be right back. All right, so I am going to move my pieces of paper and the mask is still drying so I'll just give it a few more seconds before I do anything on this one and the first thing that I wanted to do was talk about some color mixes that you can use for sand and I'm going to start with my Quin Gold and I'm going to make a purple from, I'll use cobalt and some Quin Rose. And I did get a little bit of mask way over here on my palette. I can see little droplets. So you should be very careful when you're spritzing mask because it can get on your clothes and other areas. So I will have to uh, find any little area that I had it drop onto or splatter onto and clean it up. Uh, if it gets on your clothes, it can really make a mess and not come out. So I would be very careful of that. Oh, I forgot what I was doing here. Okay, first of all, I'm going to make a purple. And 
then I will use some of that purple with my Quin Gold. And it is more Quin Gold in the mix for this particular blend. And so I'm just looking for a little bit of a neutral pale yellow. So neutral, I, by, I mean by that, that it's not vibrant. So just, that's one that you can do. And then uh, I often will use burnt sienna. And another one is you can take the burnt sienna with a little bit of the purple and make a blend that way. Whoops, something in there. You can use the burnt sienna for warmer sand with a touch of the Quin Gold in it. And that will give you a different feel altogether. You could use the burnt sienna just by itself and put that in there. And then there is sand that has a kind of a pink feel to it. So using a little Quin uh, Rose in the burnt sienna will also work. And then, as you know, there are beaches around the world and there is a variety of sand colors. So even these may not be all that you could um, find or use as a color for sand. Uh, depending on the weather or uh, if the sand is wet, this is burnt umber with a little bit of the uh, purple in it for a little variety. And then you can even find there are beaches that there's black in the sand. So um, just kind of playing with some variety of colors. This is actually my um, gray that is the Alvaro's uh, fresco. So there's a huge variety of colors and uh, kind of looks of sand depending on where you are in the world and then just what's happening with the weather on that day. All right, so I am going to go up into the sky of this one first and I am wetting the area because I want to have some soft focus clouds and I'm just coming in around. There's a clump of grass on the hill there and so I wet around that. And I'm going to get out cobalt and some cerulean. And I'll use those two colors for this sky. And I will start up at the top with the cobalt and I'm just going to of stroke some on there and then as it comes down it's a little bit uh, I want it to be lighter at the bottom and in the middle I'm going to add some of the cerulean to my cobalt mix and then as I come down to the bottom I clean my brush go back to the cerulean and I'm going to use paler version at the very bottom just to get a little bit of a turquoisey feel and as it goes back toward the horizon the sky will feel lighter and uh, turquoisier or bluer or not bluer but turquoisey because uh, the atmosphere Right, and then at the top I added a touch more cobalt because it wasn't quite dark enough. And I'm playing still, so I'm going back into it again. Now you do have to be careful if you're doing something like this because as it starts to dry, that's where you can start to get blooms. And I don't care for those harder edged little shapes that I left right there, so I'll take those out as well. Okay, so I have a sky in there and then I need to wait because right here this is uh, wet. So if I put uh, some sand on there right now, then it could cause that to move. So I will wait on doing that and just check. Yeah, all of this feels dry. So over here, I am going to paint, as I said, a closer up version of sand. So these are just my base coats and I'm going to start with 
This is uh, Quin Gold and a touch of the Burnt Sienna. And then I might even go into a little bit of purple back in the back. And it will look odd with the blue mask on there right now. And so this is a light to medium value that I'm painting in here. And this is just on dry paper, but you could pre-wet it if you want. Get a little more Quin Gold out. And so I'm coming down all the way through this area and then it will have to dry. And I went back into the mix that I already had on my palette. I think that was the burnt sienna and my purple. Whoops, don't want green sand. I'm trying to do this quickly so I'm not being careful about my mixes. All right, so I have a variety of color as a base coat over the whole thing, and I will let that dry. So I am going to actually dry this, and then I will be back. Okay, I have the two panels dry, and I'm going to go and get some color for the sand for this one, and I actually should be careful and make sure I'm not just randomly choosing colors here, but I'm mixing the purple I want and then I'm using the Quin Gold with just a touch of the purple in it. And need a little water. So I want, actually I think I want a little bit of burnt sienna in it as well. So I want kind of a lighter sand feel for this first pass. And I'll just pull it down and then might even put a little water as it comes toward the front so that it's a little lighter. Just just a, nut, a little bit in there. And then I'll leave that. And then on this one, now I need to go back and put a darker value in So now I'm going to go over and add some color to uh, the other block on the right. And I will use a little bit of the burnt sienna with a touch of purple. And I just want to create some value changes on here. And I am leaving hard edges toward the top of these shapes and then creating softer edges so that it sort of blurs down into the area around it. Same thing over here. The harder edge and then it can come back a little ways before I come in with some clear water and blur that shape down. And I need a little more. Right in here. I realized the shape up there wasn't quite blurring enough. It started to dry. And then right here, I'll blur it. Now this may not be exactly what the sand you would want to paint is looking like with the movement of the, the shapes in there, but just uh, the overall idea of this with some value changes and then the texture is what I'm getting at for this um, area of the techniques. And uh, so it might be a path in the sand that you're trying to create or a just a path that is made of sand. Um, 
and this is more just uh, about the technique, not necessarily this exact look. All right, and there are a few places I'm going to make some adjustments, and then I will let that dry. And I'll go back over to the other one. So I have dried the left side and now I'm going to add some marks on the sand to give it some more information. And I have enough color I think out from before. I'm going to add just a little bit of value to it. So I'm pulling using the Quin Gold and a touch of the purple in it. And then the other thing I'm going to do is just put, I have a little color on my brush, a little water sort of in kind of randomly toward that back edge because as I bring the marks to the back edge, I want them to blur a little bit and that will help with the distance, give it some depth. All right, so I'm using a smaller brush and I'm going to come in and I just want to bring some lines in like the sand has got some movement to it because of possibly wind that has blown some marks in the sand. And as I go back, those lines get closer together and then as they come forward, they spread out. So that will help with the look of the depth. And actually it's blurring enough back here now that I'm not getting quite the look I want because it's uh, a little too blurry. So the other way you could do that is put your lines in and then just come back and blur some of them with a little bit of clear water. And I was trying to uh, be a little quicker with it. So I have done this one before and I'll show you that toward the end and how it looked then. So if that happened for you, one of the things that you can do is just take a little bit of water on your brush and you can try to lift uh, between those lines and get a little bit of that color that spread to lift off and that can help with that movement of the um, paint. And then at uh, the back edge where the water is, I'm just going to use a little bit of cobalt with some burnt sienna in it so that it's got the feeling of a little bit uh, of a grayer water, gray blue water. And I'll just quickly put in some marks for that. And then as I come forward, I'm going to use a little bit of the burnt sienna. And by dropping that into the blue, then that makes it feel like there's sand under the water right there that's a little wet. And so it has a darker value. And then I can I went and got some Quin Gold and a little bit of the Burnt Sienna on my brush and I'm using that to kind of finish up that area right there. And then on the uh, foliage right there, I will use the Cobalt and a touch of the Quin Gold. And I just want to have some rougher edges so it feels like there's grasses or some other kind of foliage um, growing out of the dune right there. And it can vary and be a little cooler in places. Just kind of some random edges. And bring that down. And then there's a little bit right in here as well. And then I want to add a little shadow. I think that's a little too, there we go. Right up in here and maybe up under 
the grass a little bit. And then I will let some of that fade with a little water. And I want to bring the water out farther than I want the paint to flow. So as long as I put the water maybe like an inch down or half an inch down from where I want the paint to possibly end, then I should be good. And so that is a way to paint uh, sand in a scene and um, have it feel uh, like it is sand. It's the color, it's the value changes, and the things around it that will make you know, okay, that's sand. Now this one is far enough in the distance that you don't have all of the little flecks of sand. You could add a little bit with a toothbrush to um, give it that feel, but I'll show you over here how I'm going to use the toothbrush for that. Just kind of cover back over that area. And this first one, this first painting is a little damp still, so I need to be careful on that side. And I'll go ahead and use my smaller brush. So this again is just an old toothbrush. I'm going to get out some burnt sienna. And you could use a variety of colors. These are just the colors that I'm pulling out because I've been using them. And I will make the purple out of the cobalt and quin rose. So I pulled out burnt sienna, my quin gold, and I'm going to use that. And then I will also get out I'll just kind of get this wet because I might go directly into that. That is my Avero um, uh, Fresco Gray. Get that just a little wet. And I'll start with the Burnt Sienna. And basically I'm just going to uh, flick the paint onto, and this is a little big so I'm just going to lift that a touch. And you almost need it to be not too wet. If it's too wet, I tend to get bigger uh, little spritzes that come off of the brush. And so I want it to remain small and get little marks, more than big marks. And varying the color will make it feel more like uh, sand actually does, where it has a variety of values and colors and little pieces in it and depending on how this one comes out I may show you the first set of these uh, techniques because they don't always come out the way you want them every time so I'll just see and remember I have on the uh, masking fluid still. I have not lifted that off yet. So I am looking for mid to darker values on these little spritzes. So this is the Alveros Fresco and it will, whoa, it's a lot of dark. <laughs> Talking about maybe not working. <laughs> okay, just dab that up a little bit. All right, so uh, I'm going to dry those and then we will finish up here. So I'll be right back. I decided uh, for this first one that I would go ahead and flick a little mask on, or not mask, a little bit of paint on there just because I want to try it. And I do have my earlier uh, images that I had done prior to setting up for the video so I can show you without uh, the spritzing of paint and then with. So I am going to put this on here. Now this is not exactly set up for this image and because I don't want to uh, flick any of the uh, paint up into the sky. I'm just going to block off a lower section and then I don't want a lot of darker value. I just want a little bit of texture down here. So I'm using the Quin Gold with a touch of the 
purple so that I get just some lighter texture in the foreground mostly. In the background you would not, if you were seeing a distant landscape, you would not see um, the same kind of texture. It just kind of blurs together in the background. Okay, and then I'm going to move over. Well, I'm trying to keep down low on this section. All right, and then I will lift that off. So now there's a little bit of texture down in the foreground of the, for the sand there. So that could be something that you might want to add to yours. And you can see after drying this one, then it sort of starts to work all together. And the last thing that I need to do is remove the mask. Well, this may be second to last because there's something else I can show you right quick. So I'll go ahead and pull this off. And you can see I have a variety depending on how big or small your masking fluid was when you uh, splattered it on here. You can have a variety of lights and darks happen. So that is looking even closer to the way I want it. And it has a lot of texture like sand would. And then one of the last things that you might do, and I'm just going to go get sort of a random dark. So I'm using the purple and a little bit of the burnt sienna. And I could go under some of these uh, lighter or even some of the darker shapes and by putting a shadow under some of them, and I wouldn't go through all of them, and it would depend on how close this is to the viewer. So if this is part of the foreground of your painting, then you could do this. So just coming under and making a little shadow under some of these, it starts to give them a little dimension and they start to feel like little pebbles or pieces in the sand that would uh, be part of the uh, sand. So it uh, gives it some more dimension. And I could just pick a few right in here. And I think you can get the idea. So just a little bit of an extra mark here and there can help with that three-dimensional feel. And it doesn't take a whole lot to do this. It's just some layering and then uh, a little bit of some going back and adding here and there to it. All right, so those are two ways that you can create sand in a painting. And I will show you the earlier version. So basically this is the same, oops, can't see that. This is the same thing as that one. And this one, I did not uh, put any texture in the foreground for it. And it's basically the same process um, of putting the lines in the sand and giving it some texture. And then uh, just playing with some color. And then this is my earlier, uh, sand where it was some um, movement in the sand and then a little bit of texture. This one I did not add any shadows under any of the little pebbles. So uh, it just was the texture with the masking fluid and the flicking of marks. So, and I think some of the values in this are a little closer. This has got some values that are a little more uh, separated, a little more dark and lights. And so I hope that was interesting and helpful for you to get an idea of how you might create sand or a path that has sand on it. And uh, I hope you'll give uh, some of that a try and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for following along and uh, have a good day. Bye. <music>